now this is so this is our dining room this dining so room. this is where the midnight mission first starts uh, in 1914 with mm -hmm. the meals provided for the community and so we have it available so that anybody in our in the street yeah. in our homeless community can come in and enjoy a, a delicious hot meal we serve three meals a day every single day and um except for sundays we only do breakfast and dinner and the only reason why we do that is because uh, the rest of los angeles comes to skid row yes and distributes meals off their, out of their vehicles and so instead of trying to compete with them figure let them have their, their moment of glory for that day and give our, our kitchen an opportunity to take their time in preparing the dinner meal yeah. service can um, anyone get meal here or yes. do you anyone? anybody anybody you don't ask their background their mm -hmm. situation no we're we're uh a no ties type of organization you know like we don't do background checks mm -hmm. on anyone if we don't care if you're an immigrant if yeah. you all we care about is are you hungry do you want food mm -hmm. then let's get you some food or do you want to get off the streets let's get you off the streets you know and then we'll go from there um how many people do you get per day per meal service or in general uh how many people come here per day per day we're, we're definitely um averaging about well over a thousand a thousand people a day. per day and do you process them all in we one try to, to do the best uh, when it comes to shelter mm -hmm. it's a lower number than wow. in meals um because they have different options here they have the midnight mission la mission union rescue mission wine guard and then for the women there's the downtown women's center mm -hmm. and so they have options there as well but i assume you're the best <laughs> Oh, you know, we're just another yeah. organization okay. trying to help as many people. The only difference that, that we have compared to the other organizations is we're non-sectarian. So for other missions, you, ha uh, you have, you know, they have, they're more Christian based or more religious based. Oh, okay. So you have to do certain things in order to get, you know, more services, right? For us, we don't care about that. We think the opposite. We actually feel that in order to believe in something, you have to receive the service first. Yeah. Right, and so that kind of helps a lot of people with easing their minds. So meal service, there's no sermon before the meal service. We haven't done that in a, quite a while now. Um, and then for like shelters as well, mm -hmm. you know, the shelter program, we don't have that many. Uh, we don't we don't have a sermonization for of any sort. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to go in and find your own belief system and however that may be, you're more than welcome to. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna knock it. That's your journey. That's what yeah. we truly believe in. That is your journey. But for us, all we care about is how can we help serve you? That's the biggest concern. Mm -hmm. So, and this is the way it starts with the three So why meals. is it empty now? Where is everyone? The meal service is uh, already ended. So the next okay. one's going to be at 1230. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So we do open up these doors to be able to have people come inside during hot days or rainy days or even cold days. Mm -hmm. Um... But the reason why we have it, it's because we want we want to be able to make sure that, that it's available for everybody. Um, and it's, you know, if we were to start allowing everyone into the building, we'd need more security. Yes. And so, you know, that just takes a lot, of, a lot of planning and a lot of yeah. payroll. And we want to make sure that, you know, our money is also going to the people, serving them, making sure that we have the food available, the clothing. Uh, I mean, we have to we have to come out of you know the budget. We have a budget for things that we don't normally get donated, such as milk, proteins, uh, underwear. If we need underwear, because yeah. people do need underwear, yes. uh, especially women with bras, right? So we won't need to purchase purchase those items, you know. And if we don't get enough selection of shoes, we need to be able to provide mm -hmm. those as well. So the funding does go to things that people need here. Um, so instead of trying to get more security to come in and just keep an eye on having people in here, you know, we're, we'll just let them come inside during the meal service. And are all the rooms occupied? Are you full? All the beds are full right now. Yeah. So, and, but every week there's always someone that leaves, mm -hmm. whether it's because they got their housing mm -hmm. or they just couldn't stand the, the, the what to them, what's yes. confinement, right? Because a lot of people, they've been on the streets for decades. So being indoors can be very... In terms of drug use, do you prevent people from doing drugs? We actually have get... a zero tolerance on drugs and alcohol in the building. What you do outside, that's your, yeah. that's your decision. We just ask you don't bring it here. So you think that's the number one reason why people leave? No. No? No. So what, can you explain what, 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 what do you mean by confinement? What is confinement it? as in being indoors. 
being indoors. Having a small little space. You know, have, for us, you can't just walk out. You have to make a pass. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do this to hold accountability, right? Um, just so that we, you know, we know what's going on. Because mm -hmm. you're also, at the end of the day, you're also in our, in, in our facility. And so yeah. we want to make sure that we're trying to help you as best as we can. And, uh, and so for a lot of people, being on the streets for decades, years, uh, and then coming inside here where you're pretty much in someone else's, you know, uh, rules, right? Yes. yes. It becomes kind of like, I don't know what to do, right? So it's difficult for them to get accustomed to rules and accountability and the schedule, I assume. You have breakfast, right. lunch, dinner. Exactly. Okay. Um, but for a lot of people too, it's just, and this is the issue that we have or that, that I've seen, mm -hmm. um, where, you know, for some of the, gov so some of our government officials thinking like, oh, we just got to get them housing. Yeah. Mm, there's more to it, to it than that. There's one person that actually told me that they still have a tent inside their little SRO because that's what they're used to. What's SRO? SRO stands for single room occupancy. So it's essentially, come over here. Oh, wow. It's essentially a room. So you gave them a room and they built a tent, and inside, tent the inside the room. It's essentially a room this size, right? Oh my God. This isn't an SRO. This is just the entrance okay, to the elevator. Yeah, yeah. But, but this, this is essentially what, hi, the size of a room would be. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll go look for one. Go ahead, honey. So just to give you an idea of the size of an SRO, mm -hmm. this would be it right here, right? There are some that are smaller. Okay some that are a little bit bigger, but this is a, a typical size of a, of an SRO. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for a lot of people, just being indoors is not just the solution. It's also having them, uh, giving them the, the accountability and, and showing them like, this is what we do, right? Yes. We show up, we, we get up at this time to shower, mm -hmm. and go to work, right? This is how we save our money. This is where, where we decide like, okay, where you know where's the yeah. money going right and what Come percentage of the money that you get goes to the people versus the employees because nonprofits are known to be very inefficient in that a lot of the resources actually goes to administration and employees versus the people that you're trying to help well if you keep in mind nonprofits are you don't get six figures yeah right you're not making a hundred thousand dollars at a nonprofit so yeah. the resources yes some of the funding does come to be able to have the staff here mm -hmm. you know available for the community mm -hmm. but we make sure and you can even see that those reports in our uh what's called um tristar mm -hmm. no is it tri yeah tristar yeah. so it's pretty much the um the yelp for the nonprofits, right and we are completely transparent with it as to what we do right as you can see here this is what we what we do with the money, right? We purchase water so that we can pass it out to the community. Mm -hmm. So you see a cooler over yeah, there. So someone gets. There's people waiting outside. There's mm -hmm. people waiting. Well, that's for that van right there. So people do line up for other things. Um, we do have uh, again the the funding goes to what we need. There's a few people here that are probably waiting to be fly, uh, flown back home, and so that's going to cost money. Mm -hmm. So we have the funding for that. For anybody that's going to school to get their GED, yeah. which is something that, you know, most employers want you to have, a high school diploma or a GED. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a GED or a high school diploma, yeah. what are you going to do then, right? So we help people in getting, uh, passing their tests for that. And so that's where the funding goes to, mm -hmm. it as, goes to it as well. This is amazing. It seems like a very efficient operation, walking around. You have it very well organized. So, cool. Sh shall we walk inside or is there yeah. anything else to show me or we can sit Well, down? the beautiful thing about this courtyard right here is that a lot of the, a lot of things happen here. Come here. So we have 24 hour restrooms right there available to anybody in the community. All mm -hmm. they have to do is just leave their personal belongings over there and take what they need to be able to uh, use, utilize the restroom and the reason why we do that is because we've had it in the past where people would do drugs in there and yeah. they get stuck yeah. or they overdose overdose and so just to save our, our security the trouble mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to maintain the flow for it you know so that the bathroom stall is available for the next person we just ask them to take what they need and then come back 
Um, that water box was donated to the Midnight Mission so that we can provide purified water to the community. So we'll have cups or if we get a, a giant donation mm -hmm. of bottles or if we need to buy donations of bottles, then we make that available. Um, and then clothing, they're about to set up right now the clothing so that we can have uh, available clothing to anybody in the community mm -hmm. so that they don't have to walk around with tattered clothes or uh, if, they're, if they've been wearing the same clothes yeah. that's dirty, they, they can, you know, take a shower and put something fresh and then they can also leave their clothing with us mm -hmm. and we'll wash for it for sure. them and they come back in the, in the afternoon to pick it up. So do most people that come here live here? Or in the building are they just coming here to get food and get cleaned up a lot of we get a lot of kinds of people here so we have people that do live in the program mm -hmm. we have people that live in all the other sros and everyone's welcome they can either get the meal or if they need help with any other services they, they're more than welcome to come here um there's a database called hmis where everyone we stay connected with other organizations mm -hmm. to find out like okay what services have they been receiving uh or you know where have they been before right um, we also have people who live in our streets who mm -hmm. are coming into the pro or coming here to either receive the meal services, get mail. So we actually allow everybody in the community to use the Midnight Missions address mm -hmm. as their own so that they can receive mail and send mail out and it's all free yeah. of charge. Um, and, uh, how yeah. do you decide who gets a room here? How do you, so we don't take anyone that is under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. And if you have severe medical, mental, or physical health, we don't have the appropriate staff here for that. So we refer you somewhere else. We don't just say better luck somewhere else. Yeah. We actually refer you and help get you somewhere else. Now, whether or not the individual wants to take that mm -hmm. referral, that's up to them. But we always offer a referral somewhere else where it's suitable for them. So when people come here, they get diagnosed. You sit down with a counselor or someone who determines what that person's issue is and how they um, can be treated what well, we do so for us here yeah. you can't have any of any like mental health again we don't have so if it's noticeable yes we refer them somewhere else mm -hmm. right so you don't take people on drugs people who have severe mental health issues on drugs we do on drugs you do yeah and do you have programs to get people off drugs yes that's our recovery program okay yeah, and that's a one year long program mm -hmm. and it's based off of the 12 step approach. Mm -hmm. So because we know that, the, that you know, yeah. organizations like AA, CA, all those uh, have been helping several people mm -hmm. for decades, why not offer it to the yeah. community here? So we offer 12 step panels. We have the recovery program that's based off of yeah. the 12 step approach. We keep people accountable by having a sponsor doing the steps. Um, so what's the 12 step program? 12, okay. It's just a. Um, it's also a non-sectarian organization that's been around since 1934. Mm -hmm. You know, at least the oldest one. Yeah. You know, and so they base it off of more of a uh, spiritual, spiritual, uh, spiritual approach in changing our lives. So making sure that you know what actions we used to take before we do the contrary and being able to change our behavior our way of thinking mm -hmm. right instead of think, being a victim of everything seeing yeah. like okay so what can i do to be able to get myself out of this situation right or so, where did i where where did i play a part in most things so our mutual friend jared said that he went through multiple programs and none of them worked the only thing that worked was prison because he couldn't get drugs there he couldn't leave so how do you deal with that how do you deal with people who are severely addicted and have hard times getting off of it. Winging off and just showing them other ways to be able to do it. But they can always leave, right? You don't keep yeah. them in this place. This is a revolving door. People can come and go. Yeah. It's uh, We do believe in personal autonomy. Okay. Uh, everyone has the decision. This is their journey. Mm -hmm. For some people, they get it. For some others, you know, they get it for a second and then they, you know, go back to old behaviors and then come back and they, you know, try it again and they get long-term sobriety. So how many people who actually are on drugs stay here the full year and get treated? What percentage get of treated? people? Yeah, what percentage? Uh, I don't know the percentage, but let's just say, so we have about a hundred and, so we have 90, actually 90 people in our recovery program now, 40 of those 90 just graduated. Oh, wow. So they spend one year here mm -hmm. going through the program 
And then after that, where do they go? Do they work during the program? After six months, we encourage them to find work, save mm -hmm. money. Um, we teach them how to, you know, all the skills when it comes yeah. to job searching and what to do on during interviews. And do you then, train them? Is there a job training? Yeah, there is a job counselor, uh, career counselor here that helps them. So, wow. um, and then we have the and the final piece is housing. Yeah. So again, you know, we want to make sure that you aren't just going back out onto the streets. We want to make sure that you have what you need to be able to be successful in your life moving forward. And so housing is a part of that. Yeah. So when you give, give them a job, uh, do they get the money immediately or yeah. do they get it after they graduate? No, they get it immediately. They get it immediately. Yeah. I would be worried that they use the money to purchase drugs and alcohol. But that would be the individual's decision, okay. right? We can't make the, the, all of their decisions for them. We can show them what they're doing. We don't really make that much decisions for them, mm. right? We just say we don't want drugs yeah. and alcohol in here and that's it, right? No violence, no drugs and alcohol. Those are the two main rules, right? What you do outside, yeah. that's on you, right? How you want to live your life, that's going to depend on, on your yeah. actions, right? But here's an approach that we know for a lot of us, like myself, who went through the program. Yeah. Right? And I've changed so many decisions in my life. I've done so many different things in my life. Mm -hmm. And I've stopped using drugs and alcohol for over seven years now that my life is completely different than when I first came in here. Mm -hmm. And so I have that bit of an advantage to be able to show them what I do by my actions. Right? Yeah. And... If someone catches on to that and sees something and it becomes attractive, then great. This is a program of attraction rather than promotion. I'm not going to try to sell you to yeah. something that worked for me because it might yeah. not be for you. Jerry, Jerry would be a, a perfect example, right? Yes. He went through several programs. Didn't work out for him. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. So is the average person here a drug addict or... Is not everyone. A, not everyone? Not everyone. Some people, they're just going through str uh, you know, hard struggles right now, financially. Yeah. And a lot of people are experiencing that, especially right after yeah. the pandemic. A lot of people in Los Angeles have been experiencing that, not being able to make enough money because either companies left or shut down. Um, I mean, here in Los Angeles, if you walk downtown, most of the businesses in downtown have pretty much closed down or moved. Yes. Right? So that, that seems to be the issue for a lot of people, right? Um, and it just, it, it, it's a challenge for everyone. Inflation doesn't even help either, right? Gro the prices for groceries has become so much. We're feeling it even so as a nonprofit organization, but we're making do, right? And now we're, we're making it even more available to where we're providing more meals to more people. I mean, we're not only serving people here in the, in, in our building, we're bringing meals outside of the building around Skid Row and helping more people out there as much as possible. Mm -hmm. When I was driving around, this full block is full of tents on the streets. Is there anything being done about it? Would you do anything about the tents on the sidewalk? I mean, what would, what would we do other than take away the autonomy, the, the autonomous portion of it for the individual, right? We can't force anyone to come into our program. That is the, the, the key thing. We can't force you to come into our program. We can let you know that we have beds here available. And yeah. if you want to come in, great. Let's help you and get, get either into our program or somewhere else, right? But if the individual decides they want to be on the streets for whatever reason, right? They don't want to follow rules from someone else or they don't want to stop using drugs and alcohol or they're just so comfortable yeah. in, in that situation that they want to stay there. That's their decision. But we will at least try to soften the blow as much as possible for them. So one of the things that I love about this courtyard is that at 7 p.m., right now it's our access center. It's the uh, the outreach portion of it, right? And we offer all these other little services. But at 7 p.m. tonight, we're going to open that gate and we're going to allow anybody in the community yeah. that doesn't want to come into a shelter to come inside the courtyard, find a spot, and have a safe place to be able to sleep for the okay. night. And the reason why we do that is because anything can happen to you out on the streets. It's fair game for anybody, right? Yeah. But in here, we have 24-hour security. We have cameras on site. There's someone sitting by the phone re ready to call for emergency. And it's just an opportunity for people to be able to get some good night's rest. Mm -hmm. But it also becomes an opportunity for us to hopefully, again, 
um, show people that, you know what, we have more services here. If you want to come in, if yeah. you're ready to do something different, come see us, come talk to us. It makes it easier for the individual to approach us. Mm -hmm. If you were a government official, how would you deal with homelessness? It seems like the current administration is implementing this housing first approach that doesn't seem to be working really well. What is your opinion on that? Housing first is just, that would be helpful. But again, every individual is going to be different yeah. and they're going to need a special way of being able to find what it is that, so one of the things here, this is the best way that I can put it. What I've learned here from personal experience and from being here at the Midnight Mission is that every individual is experiencing some form of barrier, mm -hmm. something that's preventing them from being out, uh, from getting off the streets and into housing or whatever that may be. And that can be drug addiction, mm -hmm. mental health, not having medical insurance to continue yeah. their doctor's appointment, uh, coming here to Los Angeles for a bigger dream that never happened because things are so hard here, right? Everyone's different. Um, but that doesn't mean that just because, you know, everyone has a different, ex you know, experience that there's no help for them. It just means that now we have to go from a greater number to just one person at a time, right? And the way that that would work is, first off, let's meet their emergency, so their, their basic necessities, right? Yeah. Three meals a day, a place to shower, get the hygiene items, water, restrooms, right? Those are emergency services. That's a great start right there, right? And then once they, they have that and they want to come into a bed where they can have a daily hot shower, a place to sleep, um, then we can start breaking it down even more. What got you on the streets first? Yeah. First and foremost, right? Do you have an addiction to drugs and alcohol? Then let's do you want to get sober? Let's get you sober, right? Does everyone have a case manager? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How often do they see them? Every week they have one-on-ones and they also have groups. And at least here at the Midnight Mission. I don't know how other shelters are doing it, but for the Midnight Mission, it's it's a thing. You have to meet one-on-one one -on -one every week with your advocate to be able to have a private conversation yeah. and see what you know that advocate can do to help you remove th those barriers. And then you have a group setting so that you have that community sense, right? To be able to talk around peers that are also experiencing the same thing as you are, right? And then we get them connected. If they want uh, mental health, we get them connected to the Department of Mental Health, right? If they have medical or if they need medical yeah. attention, then we get them connected to the medical attention that they need. And if it becomes something severe, again, we don't have the appropriate staff for that. And if they need to be seen 24-7, then we will refer them somewhere where they have the appropriate staff for that. So, again, it's on an individual basis, right? Mm -hmm. And so the government, I feel, does not see that, yeah. right? They just see like, oh, then there's a quick solution. Get them into housing. Yeah. But what about the individual that, again, has been on the streets for decades, doesn't know what to do anymore yeah. or doesn't want to follow rules, right? Yeah. Because society is full of rules one way or another, yeah. right? You can't drive on this side of the road. Mm -hmm. You, you know, work has regulations. You have to show up at this time, yeah. right? You can't work overtime. Like society is just full of rules. And so for a lot of people, they don't want to follow rules and that's fine. That's mm -hmm. their decision, right? And so when they finally decide, like, you know what, okay, maybe I'll give this a shot, it becomes overwhelming because where do you start from? Yeah. Yeah, so you need that one-on-one -on -one consultation, that person who's going to be your point of contact. And someone that can that help, help you, you slowly guide you as to mm -hmm. what it is that you need to do. And we've had several successes even with that in our shelter program. I mean, our shelter program is for three to six months long on paper. Mm -hmm. We've had people leave here at four months. We've had people leave here at seven months. Mm -hmm. Like every individual is going to be different. And that is the key important factor is that to understand that your case is going to be different than my case. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be different than that person's case. Right? So it's finding out what is causing or what's preventing us to move forward yeah. and then removing that barrier and then going from there because there's always going to be a barrier so if you were a governor of california or mayor of la 
what would you do if you had access to the budget of what 11 billion dollars make use in creating more services making it more accessible to people so create more midnight missions create more centers like this i mean there's there's also one-stop shops like the midnight mission yes that would be very helpful but you also have the other organizations like chrysalis right chrysalis focuses on um specifically job search job placement career development mm -hmm. right and so getting them connected and creating more resources like that if you're going to put people off the street and into apartments yeah. or hotels make sure that you're connecting them to resources like that yeah. right not just saying well here's your room have best of luck right that's the easy way out it's the easy yeah. way out and then eventually what ends up happening is because that person doesn't know what to do guess what now they're leaving that program and back out on the streets yeah. because they don't know what to do so it doesn't really it's just a bandage right we need more long-term solutions yeah. more long-term um uh, protocols and in, in a sense right what to offer them because again every individual is going to be different i can't stress that enough right yeah. and so it's up to us to be able to show them what they have to do and again I, you're getting this from a personal experience perspective right i needed someone to guide me in what to do again yeah and yeah. it's helped me into good stead today i know several people as well that have the same similar experience what do you think about the harm reduction policies where they give people needles yeah. um, to in inject it's a, fentanyl it's a safely. great idea it's a great idea for you know i'm kind of I'm, I'm more against it yeah. <laughs> to say really right uh but at the end of the day for the individual themselves they're gonna have to make that decision right mm -hmm. it is a safer bet for somebody who does not want to stop using drugs whether it's shooting up heroin or meth yeah i remember having to do that and i'd always be very cautious and i'd clean out my needles even if they were new uh used by someone else right i clean it out before i use it myself and so that form like that idea okay that that should work but you're also not giving them an opportunity to decide whether or not you know yeah. they can stay sober and change things even more for the good yeah. right and from personal experience, after the minute I put drugs and alcohol out of the picture, mm -hmm. my life got bigger. My life got better. I, where I had no hope and no ambitions, now I have hope and ambitions. And that's just me, right? Someone else might not have that, that opportunity, but that's not to say that they won't be able to have that opportunity. Yeah. That just means that it's, they don't have it right now, mm -hmm. right? This isn't going to be something that just you put the drugs away and alcohol yeah. away and things get better automatically it's going to be a time process and a lot of changing on my end right so harm reduction is by my by my personal opinion not not a a, a valuable solution mm -hmm. it's a temporary solution for somebody who is going to continue to just do the same thing over and over and not have any growth yeah yeah. So, can I ask how much money you get from the government? Me? Or in general, the organization? The organization? Yeah. Pennies and dimes. Just to be able to have the shelter program, we're averaging about forty dollars per head per night. So where does where does the rest come from? Uh, private donations. People that believe in the mission that we have here have seen it, experienced it. Alumni like myself, I make contributions to the Midnight Mission because. I know what it did for me um, and from fundraising events, you know, um, and w which is the sad part because, you know, I, I just ended up finding out through our CEO that we are getting $40 per person per head when hotels are getting $400 per person per night, right? That's crazy. Just to be able to get someone off the streets and into a hotel room, yeah. right? And so, and that's with barely offering any services compared to what we're offering the, the, here. Well, the LA city just buys up hotels that they place homeless people into, but they do nothing about it. That's all they do. Just get people into the hotel. That's it. And what happens is it becomes a drug addict, you know, drug addict place. And, um, 
prostitution and abuse and yeah. horrible. It's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. But see, and that's that's you know the difference, you know, the black and white difference right here, right? Is the services that we're offering here for the for anybody in the Skid Row community yeah. compared to the services being offered in mm -hmm. a hotel where it's a temporary solution, right? We're more looking at the long term. Our goal as an organization is to put ourselves out of business. Yeah. And that's something that you don't really hear as much, right? Yeah. But it makes sense. If we're out of business, that means that there's no more issues with homelessness. You're probably the only nonprofit that would say that and actually do what you say. Because most nonprofits, you know, as we know, live off of government funding and they want to keep getting that funding. So it is a, it is a double edged sword. It's a double edged sword for sure. You know, you solve the problem, you die, but then these people who work for you get fired and have to find a new job. So, And that is the reason why I love this organization yeah. even more personally. Not because, you know, they helped me, but because they also showed me by their example. Yeah. Right? And now I get to do that for the next person. Right? Whether or not they get it is out of my control. Yeah. Right? But all I can do is at least be here so that if they do fall... I can be there to give them a hand up. Mm -hmm. And that is one of my favorite catchphrases that we have here is that we don't do handouts. We do hand ups, right? We want to be able to help guide you, not just say, hey, here you go. And you see yeah. that a lot. Like, this is, it's funny. I was just looking at this on Saturday because I was here at work. You know, uh, a group of, uh, of religious folk just passing out clothing and, and bananas and water. And I'm looking at them and it's just kind of like, but what now after that? Yeah, that's the question that comes to my mind, right? And so even when I'm off the clock and walking yeah. around Los Angeles, I have flyers yeah. with me that shows the services here. There's a map that a coworker of mine created that shows all of the services in Skid Row. But L.A. County helped out with per extending that even more where now it's on Google Maps where you can see all of the resources in the greater Los Angeles area. And all you have to do is scan a QR code, which everyone in our suite still gets phones, right? And you get to find out where your nearest resources yeah. is. If we can avoid you coming to Skid Row for any resources, that'd be great. Because here's the real, harsh reality. Once you come into Skid Row, it's hard to get out, right? But if we can find you resources outside yeah. of the Skid Row area, you know, that's a good start for you to be able to just go from there, right? And when you get yourself situated, if you need to stop by here for a split second and be able to, I don't know, get vouchers to get an ID or to get connected to some education or job placement, then that so be it, you know? But we don't want to add in more here to Skid Row. And so I always encourage people, use this map, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'll even, like, if people do come to Skid Row, I'll use my business card as a, as a ticket meal, right? Come find me and I'll get you a plate. Free yeah, of charge. Yeah. Right? Because I want to make sure that people know where the services are and where they can get help. What type of jobs do people work? Here at the Midnight Mission? Yeah. We have plenty. We have maintenance. We have security. Kitchen. Um, and so the people that are sheltered here also work here? Yes. We do have some of our... our uh, yeah. So those that are in the recovery program, which is a one-year-long program... That's part of our work therapy program. And what that is, is an opportunity for you to gain the experience of working again, right? Yeah. Learn the two, the, the do's and don'ts. Yeah. Make the mistakes that otherwise at an actual employer you'd get fired for. Yeah. Here, you won't get fired. We'll just have a coaching opportunity to be able to tell you like, look, you showing up five minutes late yeah. every day yeah. is not, you know, it's not something that someone would want to have in, in an employment. So why don't you try showing up five minutes early? Let's start there, yeah. right? Three minutes early, just to yeah. even simplify it even more, right? And just give them the opportunity to grow, right? And so, and same thing happens with finances, right? You have all that you need available here. Three meals a day, clothing, hygiene items, right? You can save that money and hopefully walk out with a decent amount of money, right? And so 
we always encourage our residents to save any of our residents, whether you're in the shelter or the yeah. crisis bridge program, to save 70% of any income that you get into a private account. Mm -hmm. And that private account, we will treat it as if it's a bank statement for you. We will give you a, a monthly statement showing how much money you mm -hmm. put in. So you help how them much set you it put up? up. Exactly. Okay. Right? And our goal is that when you decide, when you get an apartment and you're like, hey, I'm ready to leave, mm -hmm. we'll make you a, your, a check of your money. And you'll hopefully be walking out of here with ten to $15,000 so long as you're wow. not pulling out so much money. Right? If you start pulling out money, then we're going to start asking questions as yeah. to why, you know, why not save it, right? It's your money. You can do what you want with it. That's your decision, right? But if you can save it, yeah. why not? That's a lot of money, 10, 15K. You know, you could get a nice apartment with it. Have enough get some to... furniture yeah, if you don't have any. Furniture. If not, we'll help you with that too. Yeah. So like, how do you think the government is preventing you from doing your job more effectively? When it comes to the government program uh, that we have here, where we're getting that government funding, um, you know, there's certain things that we wouldn't be able to do. That the you know, uh, it's 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 the hoops that we have we would have to jump in. Well, we don't want you to do that. Let's just do it this way. And so they we tell already you exactly know. what you can do with the money. Yeah, exactly. But yet, but yet we know like, okay, so this person obviously is not yeah. going to be like this other person. So, you know, we want to try this. You can't do that. Just stick to the, stick to what's on the paper. So I mean, what can you use the money for? Just to be able to, uh, I mean, quite honestly, the $40 per person is really not yeah, much not that, that we much. can do. It costs, we average about almost $2 per plate per person, right? And then plus stay, right? To keep the, the you know, the water bill, right? To provide, it, it, it adds up. And yeah. it's more, it's definitely more than $40, right? I mean, if you think about it right now, are you, are, you know, what are your, your electrical and your, and your water bills like, right? Yeah. What's the cost of food? Just yesterday, I bought groceries and it cost me seven seventy dollars for just barely anything. Yeah, it's terrible. Right? It's so terrible. forty dollars really doesn't take you anywhere. You've asked for more money and they said no. Yep. But at the same time, like so be it. We'll find another way. For many years, we've actually were very proud at the fact that most of our money. It's private donations. Yeah. Which means that people love what we do here. People support us because of the hard work that we're putting into it. So why do they think that buying hotels and placing people there and doing nothing with them afterwards is a better solution than giving you money? I can't answer if that. If they see results here. I can't answer that. That's a question for them. I don't know what the, the, their thought process is on that. That's so All I know is that what we're doing here is working. Yeah. It's so stupid. Their political career depends on it, you know, and they're not trying harder to solve it. It could possibly be the, the corporate greed, right? Money in, in homelessness. Yeah. Uh, true. What do you think about Prop 47? Do you think we should reverse it? I'd rather not put any any comment on that one right now. Okay. I don't or, want to speak as a for the organization. Or AB one oh nine. AB one oh nine I don't like the idea of, you know, getting people like just uprooting them. Yeah. Just like that. It, not it basically offering any created services. this problem because people don't get prosecuted, they get released, they could do drugs on the street, they could deal drugs and nothing happens to them. They could steal stuff, shoplifting is legal. Just here. For the most part. Yeah. Right? This is like uh, a Western film, right? Where it's uh, everyone's rogue. Correct. Yeah. So. Is there any other place that I should see? Here in the organization? Yeah. I mean, there's the, the dorm settings, but I won't, I won't have that film. So. Makes sense. I want to respect the privacy. Yeah. That's their living arrangement. Yeah, of course. 
first. And but let me show you the, the, this ground floor. So you already seen the courtyard. This lovely lady keeps the uh, Hi, nice to meet you. Keeps the, the, the phone secure, make sure that people get directed. The mail center and the and the barber shop, which is right over here. Oh, barber shop. Yeah, nice. it's been part of the Midnight Mission since 1914. So right here, we're averaging about 800 articles of mail. That lovely, gorgeous woman right there, the one that puts makes it all possible. Barber shop is all done by volunteers, mm -hmm. and actually, we have a couple residents who come and do it themselves and help out their their peers. Wow. We have a clinic that's partnered with us that provides basic services to anybody in the Skid Row community, not just our mm -hmm. residents. This one's just glorified because he brought the, uh, not really glorified, he's done a lot for the organization. He brought tons of funding to be able to provide this location or to open this location in 2005 so that yeah. we can be in the center of Skid Row and have a bigger facility to house more people and offer more services. Mm -hmm. He also brought in the 12-step program, the recovery program to the Midnight Mission. He actually came to the Midnight Mission in 1965 uh, or somewhere around there mm -hmm. to receive services because he was out on the streets. And uh, even then, we still had a zero tolerance yeah. of violence and drugs and alcohol. And he got a, a bit mad because he did not make it for the, for the meal service. And so, you know, he made a pact that someday he was going to come here and run the place and sure enough in 1974 they uh, you know they needed a, a new managing director and after having some time sober and wow. building his life up they contacted him and he's been here ever since his dying breath so in 2020 when he passed away he was still working under the midnight mission that's amazing so and he so was actually able to bring all of this funding from all of these folks here. So he had great connections, and this is just from one year, 2013. Oh, God, that's a lot of money. You know? And so, again, all of this funding goes into providing the services here available so that we can have the staff to be able to mm -hmm. run and help out with this and also still purchase and, and budget and, you know, get the items that are needed for the people, creating mm -hmm. those budget lists so that... We're not overexpending on things that are necessary and making sure that, you know, we're also maintaining the lights on for the community. So you yourself went through this program. Mm -hmm. You recovered after the year. You started working here as a volunteer. and No, actually, I, I was, at that time, I was actually in a, in a mental space where I was like, I'm tired of this place, right? I'm tired of the rules. I just want my own place, yeah. right? And, uh, and I finally got my own place. And when I moved out, I found myself, without even thinking about it, I found mm -hmm. myself coming back here wow. because I've made friends, you know, with other guys in the program. Yeah. I've made great connections, and I trusted the staff that were here, mm -hmm. so I'd come and visit them. If I'm struggling with mm -hmm. something, I'd come talk to those advocates. Or if I needed groceries, they always helped me out. If I needed a haircut, mm -hmm. not that I, you can tell okay. now, but, you know, if I ever needed a haircut, I knew where I can come just to save up a couple of dollars more, right? Wow, so you're still using the services. I was still now. using the services. And then after a year, yeah. you know, um, I, I was in search of another job because yeah. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. I've been doing retail for 12 years, and I was like, I need something different. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of my friends, who's currently my roommate now, he was working here as a volunteer manager. And... Um, and he told me about a position opening up in his department, and I applied with no hope or idea of actually getting a, a, a chance, mm -hmm. and I got the chance. And I've been here ever since for five years. That's another differentiator, is that this organization hires people who went through the program, who have no other experience, but understand the problems really well and have connections with, mm -hmm. with the community. I feel like other nonprofits just want bachelor's or master's degrees from universities. And here they actually encourage. We have a yeah. budget, a budget yeah. from private donors who are like, we want to be able to get you guys a little bit more knowledge, yeah. right? Yeah. And so we're able to be able to go to school. I'm actually in school for graphic design, which has nothing to oh, do wow. with what I'm doing. Uh -huh. But my goal is to be able to utilize and save the organization more money, right? Maintaining that website, yeah. right? Creating our own graphics and logos, right? Uh, and then also doing my own little private business so that I can have more money to be able to 
you know, give back to the community and also survive more. Right, go ahead, hon. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> so, like, I have my hopes and dreams now that I plan to execute little by little, right? And that was possible because I started here, because they made it possible. That's right? amazing. Hi. It really is incredible. And so you're in close collaboration with the other organizations? I try to be as much as possible um, because I'm, I, I deal with volunteers. You know, I don't have that much connection mm -hmm. with the other nonprofit organizations, but certain departments here, like our programs department and our access center, they're well connected with other nonprofit organizations to try to get people into housing. Mm -hmm. And so they're constantly, every day, you know, on the phone with someone from a different organization trying to help someone to get off the streets. And so do you work with rehabs as well? Mm -hmm. We have centers, non-profits, for-profits, or state. Yeah. All of them? All of them. Which, which ones well, do you think are the best? Non-profits. Non-profits. Why is that? Does the state have any rehabs? or the state? I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know what, what the states have in that aspect. I know that there are for-profit or non-profits through government funding, but non-profits like this where... There's no expectations from the other yeah. person, right? Yeah. That's the key part for me. No one expected anything from me. Just the fact that if I'm hungry, come eat. If I want to sleep, lay down. If I want to shower and change my clothes, mm -hmm. go take a shower. Here's a bar of soap and a mm -hmm. towel. Here's some clothing. Go do it. No expectations. How do you evaluate your success? Or what, what are your metrics? What are your KPIs? As we say. My, my, my metric, personally or in general? Uh, for the organization. For the organization is how many times are people moving out and not having to come back, mm -hmm. right? Um, for the success rate is, you know, just recently we had a graduation for the recovery program. That showed, again, 40 out of 90. It's not close to half, but yeah. it's def or it's not half, but it's close to half, right? Now, even then, we try to have an aftercare program, right? Keeping them accountable. How are you doing? How are things? Are you struggling with anything? Do you need help with anything? Let's, you know, continue. We encourage anybody. Yeah. Even if you moved out of the Midnight Mission with your own place, we want you to come back if you need anything else, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's you need more help or you just want to give back to the community. I have plenty of alumni that come back and volunteer their time and give back to, to the people that are just coming in. Mm -hmm. So that success rate is, is vetted by that, is how much contact is coming back in. What's right? the average? How many times do people need to come here and go through the program before they get treated? Uh, I mean, what's going on? For recovery, it's a bigger percentage. I mean, there's people that are currently in our program that were in the program when I was there seven years ago. So it can definitely average pretty high. I'm not sure the, the number, uh, but when it comes to people that are in our shelter program, you yeah. rarely see them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's barely any, and you know, they come back to volunteer. You know, they run, you know, rarely come in to take groceries because yeah. they need help with that. Yeah. And they even sometimes come and use a computer lab for education and, and job placement. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to be uh, in tech, wants to become a computer scientist, do you have the resources to train them? We have the resources to as help as them get to school. So whether it's an LA Trade Tech, okay. right, LA Trade Tech School, mm -hmm. or to go into community college, mm -hmm. we will help with that. Mm -hmm. But we don't have, like we have someone that teaches the basic stuff, right? Right. right. Volunteers help us with, uh, with the GED preparation. Right, so the, teaching them the four courses and getting them prepared so mm -hmm. that when they're ready to take the test, yeah, we pay for the testing. They just have to show up, pass the test, and that's it. And then from there, we, we figure out like, do you want to continue to go to school for something else? Yeah, right. We have people in that work therapy program who work with our maintenance department, and they decide, you know what, I kind of like playing with electricity, right? I like being like an ele electrician, and so we help them get into school for that, right? Someone might be wanting to come, become a plumber or a chef, right? So we get, them, we get them connected to as much resources as possible. And this is the best place to do when you are in this program because you don't have to worry about anything. 
You don't have to worry about paying bills and being on time with those bills. Yeah. Right? Perfect opportunity. So what advice would you give to the government or government officials that are struggling to solve this problem? Don't recreate the wheel. There's plenty of perfect examples of what to do. In the Midnight Mission, I feel like it's yeah. one of them, right? Of all the work that we do. And how to actually budget so that the money that you are putting together is going to the people and the services that yeah. it's needed, mm -hmm. right? Again, I'm not here making triple digits, right? I'm, ba I'm making just enough to be able to pay my bills yeah. and, buy and put food on the table, right? But there was some work from my, on my end. If we can do it, they can do it. Mm -hmm. And what advice do you have for families that have family members that are struggling with drug addiction, homelessness? Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't try to change them because you have no power over that. But be as supporting as possible. If, they, if you've had struggles with them before, be prepared with even more facts and more resources, right? One of the biggest things that a lot of people that I see on the streets, you know, when I see them often, mm -hmm. you know, they become happy when I, after giving them the resources, like, hey, if you're hungry, here's where you can get food. And that's just outside of Skid Row. When I see them again, guess what? That same person is like, thank you so much for letting me know yeah. about that place. I did not know that that existed, right? And all I did was just provide them with the information, right? Because if I had enough money to be able to feed the world, I'd do it. Yeah. But in, realistically, I don't have that. Yeah. So the next best thing is this is where you can go. It's amazing how many types of help people can get here. It's not just housing. It's not just food. It's everything they need. Uh, that's that's really what I appreciate. It's that you have connections with all these other organizations. You send people to them based on their needs. You treat everyone as individual, case by case basis. That's what we need. We need and I, more. And I think that, I'm sorry to cut you off. And I think that's where they kind of were thinking about with the harm reduction. That's what they were yeah. trying to do. Think about it in that yeah. aspect. But it, you know, again, that's the difference, right? Is that yeah, we still give them each individual their autonomy. But we also kind of, you know, show them like, hey, so you've already tried this. It's not working out. Yeah. So why don't we try this side? Give that a shot. And if that doesn't work out for you, you already know that this is already here waiting for you. That's your decision, yeah. right? But why don't you try it a different way? Let's give that a shot. And if you're not, if you don't want to, it's up to you. You know, but here we offered it. It's up for you, for grabs for you. And that's one of the things that I've learned in recovery, right? Is that no one can do anything for me to change in my life. I have to do that, right? But someone can yeah. show me by a set of spiritual tools, right? Yeah. Now it's up to me whether or not I'm going to pick up those spiritual tools and utilize them and do something different. Well said. Well said. I agree. Thank you. Cool. Anything else you want to talk about? Any, any other notes? No, that's it. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate your time. And um, keep me posted on, on what, what you're doing here. Absolutely. Cool. Okay.